Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This is Church on the Hill, bringing you church right where you are. There's a song that we used to sing that says, We've come to hear your word. As we come together in the presence of the Lord in this fashion, the only thing that we have come to do is to hear the voice of God. In the voice of God, there is direction. In the voice of God, there is, you know, our provisions, our daily provisions. The word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet. So the word of the Lord gives us direction what to do in this very situation of lockdown that we find ourselves in. So I want us to sit back and relax and wait for the word of God as Apostle MVG Lipoko will be ministering to us today. And just before we do that, I want you to remember that this is the best time for you to sow into you know, the kingdom of God. Don't stop giving, continue giving. The same way Isaac sowed in the land of famine, I want you to sow, even in this situation where you, you don't know what the future holds after the lockdown, what will be happening to your projects, what will be happening to your job, whether jobs will be cut or not. This is the time where you can put the seeds of faith unto God and say, in God I trust. Even as I give, I know that my future is, uh, is guaranteed in God. God will make a way for you. So if you are a member of Church on the Hill, remember to uh, contact your branches and uh, ask for the branch details for your uh, accounts. And if you are not a member, you are welcomed also just to give into that account that is provided on your screens. Apostle MVG Lipoko is in the house. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Greetings to you in the name of Jesus. This is Apostle MVG Lipoko, making you brighter, better, and bigger. We are still on lockdown, but remember that God still sits on the throne and he reigns forever and forever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. He is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. His messes I knew every morning. Great is his faithfulness. You and I, every day when we wake up in the morning, we wake up to the new messes of God. I want you to know that it is well with you. It is well with your family. I'm so excited about this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. There is an old song that we used to sing some years ago, which says, I keep on falling in love with Jesus over and over again, over and over again. The love of God gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. I want to believe that during this lockdown, we are enjoying the love of God as it gets sweeter and sweeter by day. This morning, I'm speaking to you on this topic, having the mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ. As part of my introduction, let me remind you that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in the body. A human being is a spirit with a soul, but living in the body. So the mind is part of your soul, having the mind of Christ. I'm reading 1 Thessalonians 5, verse number 23. It reads, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to believe that Adam and Eve, before they fell, they were complete spirit, soul, and body. Their spirits, their souls, and their bodies were well aligned with God. They were in sync with God. But after the fall of men. Things started going the other way. So the Bible says, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking to you today about having the mind of Christ. Adam and Eve were created in the image of God 
according to his likeness, meaning that they were like God. They were like God because they were made in his image according to his likeness, created in God's class. They could do everything that God could do in his own power, as creative as God himself. But the devil came and told them a lie. This is how the devil operates. He always comes into our lives and tells us lies and schemes against us. And most of us, we believe the lies of the devil. These people were created in the image of God. But when you read Genesis chapter 3, Satan comes into their lives and he begins to lie to them. Very interesting. He says to them, if you eat from that tree, that forbidden tree, you will be like God. Very interesting. Because these two people were like God already. Because they were created in his image and according to his likeness. But the devil comes and he says to them, if you break the law of God, if you disobey God, if you eat from the forbidden tree, you will be like God. This is how the devil operates. He comes into your life and tells you that you are sick. And if you buy into this lie, indeed sickness will come upon you. He comes and tells you that you are broke. He is lying to you. But if you buy into his lies, then poverty will come upon your life. He comes and tells you that because of your terrible past, there is no way that God can forgive you. There is no way that God can use you. But if you buy into his lies, whatever he says to you about you, then it comes to pass. He comes to you and he says, you know what? You are not a good believer because of one, two, three, and four. So I'm saying to you, child of God, don't buy into the lies of the devil. He is a liar, even a father of lies. If you read John 8, verse 44, the Bible tells us that the devil is a liar but he's also the father of lies. Remember that I'm talking to you about having the mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ. So you need to understand that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in the body. So with your spirit, you connect to God. With your soul, you connect to self. With your body, you connect to the world around you. Meaning with your spirit, we are God conscious. With your soul, we are self conscious. With your body, you are world conscious. Never forget that you are a spirit with a soul living in the body. But today, I'm concentrating or focusing on your mind, which is part of your soul. Having the mind of Christ. If you read the Bible in Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, as you think in your heart, so are you. As you think in your heart, so are you. Meaning, the way you think, it controls the way your life will ultimately be. Hear me, child of God. The battle is in your mind. The battle is in your mind. Whoever wins the battle in your mind, that person will control your life. If God wins the battle in your mind, the word of God will control your life. But if Satan wins the battle in your life, the devil will determine your behavior. The devil will determine what happens in your life. So today I want to challenge you to begin to have the mind of Christ. You might be asking, but Apostle, how do I begin to acquire or to have the mind of Christ? Remember that God and his word are one. Jesus and the word of God are one. If you influence your mind with the word of God, you will have the mind of Christ that is fashioned after the word of God, after the ways of God, after the word of Christ. For you to experience the power of God in your life. You must have the mind of Christ. Hear me, child of God. There is no way you can conquer in your life if your mind is not influenced by the word of God. There is no way your behavior can be in line or aligned to the word of God if your mind is not influenced 
by the word of God. So if we want to know what is happening in your life or why certain things are happening the way they do in your life, we have to check your mind. We have to check your thoughts. If you're not committed to your family, we have to go into your mind and check the thoughts that you have regarding family. If you're not committed to your success, to your life, we have to go into your mind and begin to check the thoughts that occupy your mind. So you need to have the mind of Christ that is influenced by the word of God. Do you know that people don't just happen to wake up in the morning and sin? They sin because there are certain thoughts of sin that occupy or influence their minds. Listen to this one. Very interesting. The moment you think about sinning or the moment you think about sin, your entire life begins to align with the thoughts of sin or of sinning in your mind. Even your money will begin to align itself and it will be ready to sponsor your sinning. Your body will align and be ready to sin. So I'm saying to you, child of God, if your mind is not influenced by the word of God, you'll find yourself doing things that you don't want to do in your life or about your life. I want us to go to Philippians 2, verse number 5. Philippians 2, verse number 5, we are talking about you having the mind of Christ. Philippians 2, verse number 5, the Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Powerful verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In the New Living Translation, it says, listen, you must have the same attitude that Jesus or Christ Jesus had. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. In the Message Translation, it says, please pay attention. It says, think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. So the Bible talks about you having the mind of Christ. You having the attitude of Christ. You having the way of thinking of Christ. When we say to you, child of God, have the mind of Christ, we are saying to you, have the attitude of Christ. Look at things the way Christ does. Approach life like Christ. If you approach life like Christ, your life will align to the ways of Christ and the word of God. I believe with all of my heart that when Jesus was on earth, working physically on earth, he lived a worry-free life, a stress-free life, depression-free life, doubt-free life, sickness-free life, and sin-free life because his entire being, spirit, soul, and body, we're all aligned with the word of God. This is what I believe with all of my heart. That Jesus, his spirit was in tune with the spirit of God or with God. His soul was aligned to God and the word of God. But also his body obeyed the principles of the Bible. Spirit, soul, and body. Jesus Christ was aligned to the will and the purpose of God. That is why I believe that he was free of worry. He was free of stress. He was free of anxiety. He was free of sickness. He was free of sin. During this lockdown in our country, it is very important for us to have the mind of Christ. The moment we begin to have the mind of Christ, stress will not be an issue. Depression will not be an issue. Fear will not be an issue. Sickness will not be an issue because we know that the word of God in our minds affects our environment. It affects our bodies and it determines the kind of life that we live. I'm talking to you right now about having the mind of Christ, Jesus Christ, 
was well aligned with God the Father. That is why he could say with confidence that I speak what I hear the Father speak. And I do what I see the Father doing. Powerful for him to be able to say everything that I do, I copy from the Father. Everything that I say is what I hear the Father say. It means Jesus and the Father were one. Jesus and the Father were well aligned. Jesus submitted himself to the principles of the word of God, which are the principles of the word of God. His mind, hear me, child of God, his mind was the mind of the Father. That is why his behavior was in line with the word of God. Remember, I said to you earlier on that what goes on in your mind determines what goes on around you. Your behavior, your actions are determined by the kinds of thoughts that fill your mind. So Jesus' mind was aligned to the word of God. That is why his behavior was consistent with the principles of the Bible. Most of you, I want to believe that you have heard this powerful statement, very common statement. It says, watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, for they become your actions. Watch your actions, for they become your habits. Watch your habits, for they become your character. Watch your character because it becomes your destiny. Remember where we started. We started with your thoughts, meaning your character is determined or influenced by your thoughts, and so is your life and your destiny. Child of God, if you want to change your life, if you want to change your environment, if you want to change your marriage, if you want to change your business, you have to start with your mind. Which thoughts occupy your mind? Are your thoughts influenced by the word of God or influenced by what the devil tells you or says to you? So the Bible says, let this mind be in you also, which was in Christ Jesus, having the mind of God. Your thoughts, hear me, child of God, your thoughts determine your destiny. It all begins in your mind, meaning your mind is the launching pad of your life. That's where your life is launched. That's where your life begins. It's like an aircraft. Before it takes off and reach for the skies, it must first start on the runway. So your thoughts are more like your runway when you take off. If your thoughts are negative, so will be your life. So I'm saying to you, child of God, you need to change the way you think. Allow your thoughts to be influenced by the word of God. So your thoughts determine your destiny. They determine your behavior. They determine what becomes of your life. What goes on between your two ears, what goes on in your mind, is what really goes on in your life. Let me say it again. What goes on in your mind is what really goes on in your mind. So I'm saying to you today, if you want to change your life, change the way you think. If you want to stop sinning, change the way you think. If you want to change and influence your marriage, your family, change the way you think. If you want to impact your business, change the way you think. As you think, so you become. Let the mind of Christ, which is the mind of the word of God, be in you. We are talking about the power of the mind. That the way you think affects your environment, affects your life, influences your behavior so if you want to change your life and change your behavior change your thinking if you want to stop sinning change 
the way you think, your thoughts of sin. If thoughts of sin occupy your mind, you can't help it but sin. So your thoughts, listen to me, your thoughts determine your destiny, your behavior, your life, your environment. So Jesus Christ, what made him to live a victorious life, a successful life, free of sickness, free of sin, free of worry, free of doubts, it is because his thoughts or his mind was influenced by the word of God. I don't want to believe that Jesus would wake up in the morning stressed, depressed, worried, sick. Every day when he woke up, he knew that this day was going to work for him because the thoughts that occupied his mind were the thoughts of God. Remember, child of God, that in this life, we overcome by the word of God. Remember that God and his word are one. God created all things by the power of his word. He upholds all things by his word. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Everything that was made or created was created by the power of of the word of God. And the Bible tells us that even darkness could, could not resist the power of the light of the word of God. But it is important that your mind must be full of the word of God. So I'm speaking to you today about having the mind of God or having the mind of Jesus. Hear me, child of God. Jesus Christ was not moved by what people would say to him. Criticisms did not affect him. The behavior of the people, their attitudes, I mean, to, towards him, did not move him at all because his mind was occupied with the thoughts of God and the word of God. So having the mind of Christ, having the mind that is influenced by the word of God. So I want to talk to you right now about getting rid of sinful thoughts. Getting rid of thoughts that are occupied with sin. Thoughts that are occupied with the agenda of the devil. Let me remind you. I said earlier on that the thoughts of Jesus are the thoughts of God, which is the word of God. Because God is his word, or God and his word are one. So if I'm saying to you right now, you must have the mind of Jesus. I'm saying to you, you must have the thinking of God, the attitude of God, and the attitude and the thinking of God are in line with his word, because there is no way you can separate God and his word. So, child of God, you must begin to get rid of sinful thoughts in your mind. Jesus, spirit, soul, and body, he was together or in line with the word of God and with God himself. Even Adam and Eve, before the fall, I want to believe that spirit, soul, and body, they were in line or aligned with the word of God. That is why Adam could name all the animals as if God was the one naming them. You know why? It is because his thinking was the thinking of God. His attitude was the attitude of God. I'm challenging you right now in the name of Jesus that the only way you can live a sinless life. The only way you can overcome sin in your life is by changing the way you think, is by changing your attitude towards sin. Get rid of the thoughts of sin in your life. Let's go to Mark chapter 7. I'm going to read from verse number 20 to verse number 23. Mark chapter number 7. The Bible says, and he said, what comes out of a man is what defiles a man. 
what comes out of a man that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts. Let me pause. Out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts. What corrupts you, what corrupts your behavior, what corrupts your marriage, your family, your career, your business, is what proceeds out of your heart the evil thoughts that proceed out of your heart. That should tell you that your mind and your heart, they work together as a team. Your soul and your spirit or your heart, they work together as a team. What affects your environment is what comes out of your heart through your soul or through your mind. So your mind has to be influenced by the word of God, but also by the ways of God. So what comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts of adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Oh, what a list of all the things that we must begin to address in our lives. If one of the things that I've mentioned right now, you know they happen in your life, the only way you can change it, the only way you can overcome is by making sure that your mind is occupied with the thoughts of Jesus. Your mind is occupied with the word of God. This is my message to you today. That have the mind of Christ. The moment you sin, it is no longer a mistake. Because your soul or your mind, which has control over your life, has been thinking about that sin. Meaning in your mind, you are entertaining the sin, allowing the thoughts of sin to occupy your mind, to control your mind, without you knowing your body says yes to sin. Before you know it, you have messed up. So today, you must begin to influence your mind influence your thinking by the word of God. Let me remind you. Man is a spirit. Man has a soul. Man lives in the body. So if you are not born again, or if you have not accepted Jesus as your personal savior, the Bible says you are dead spiritually. Remember what God said to Adam and Eve. In Genesis, he said to them, you may eat from all the trees in the garden, but you should not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day you eat from that tree, you will surely die. Another version of the Bible says, in dying, you will die. So they ate, meaning they disobeyed God, but the next day they walked up the yeah, woke up, walked like you and me. Meaning, they were alive physically, but spiritually, they were dead. Because when the Bible talks about death, it means separation. God was saying to them, if you disobey me, if you eat from the forbidden tree, you will be separated from me. You will no longer have a relationship with me. Spiritually, you will die. That is why when God showed up the next day in the Garden of Eden, they ran away, they hid themselves because spiritually they were dead. They no longer had a relationship with God. But to thank God for Jesus. Jesus came to restore mankind back to God. So when you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, 
It is only your spirit that gets born again. You remember Nicodemus when he went to Jesus at night and he said, Master, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Jesus said, you must be born again. He could not understand what Jesus meant by that statement. He said, Jesus, are you telling me that at my age, I must go back to my mother's womb and be reborn? Jesus said, no. What is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of spirit is spirit. You must be born again. Men in your spirit, the one that died at the fall, it must resurrect in Christ. So that is why the Bible says, if any man, if any woman is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, everything is new. But it is new in your spirit. So when you accept Jesus, only your spirit gets alive. But your soul remains the same. Your body remains the same. So your responsibility now after accepting, Jesus, after accepting Jesus as your personal savior is to work on your soul, on your mind. So the Bible says, receive the implanted word of God which is able to save your soul. But when you read in Romans chapter 12 from verse number 1, the Bible says you need to yield or submit your bodies to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And it says you must not conform to the standards, the system, the culture, the way of doing things of the world, but you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way you can change your mind, the only way you can renew your mind, the only way you can influence your thinking is by taking the word of God and allow the word of God to influence the way you think. But your body, the Bible tells us that it will only be born again or saved or delivered at the coming of the Lord Jesus. What do you do then with your body? You put it under. This is what the Apostle Paul says. He says, I put my body under. I rule over my body. I'm the boss of my own body. I will not allow my body to tell me what to do and to dictate times to me. I am the boss. If I say to my body, sit, my body must sit. If I say to my body, fast, my body must fast. If I say to my body, we're going to church, there is no way the body can tell me otherwise because you are in charge. But hear me, your behavior is influenced by your thoughts. So today, I'm challenging you to begin to change the way you think. Let me finish with this scripture. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. God doesn't say, my thoughts will never be your thoughts. He says, for now, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not my ways. But it doesn't say my ways will never be your ways. Because when you read the Bible in Psalms 103, it tells us that God revealed his ways to Moses. Meaning that Moses knew the ways of God. So it is possible for you, child of God, to have the thoughts of God, to have the mind of God, to have the ways of God. But for that to happen, you must give yourself time to go into the word of God and study the word of God, read the word of God, influence your thinking by the power of the word of God. I'm talking to you today about having the mind of Christ. Remember that you are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in the body. Your mind is part of your soul. Your mind controls your behavior. It controls what happens around you. So influence your mind with the word of God. If you can do that, child of God, you will overcome sin, stress, anxiety, worry, doubts during this COVID-19 will not follow you. There is no way you can spend sleepless nights worried if you are full of the word of God. I want to believe that this word has empowered you. It has changed you. And it has changed the way you think. May the word of God 
influence your mind right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what you're going through. But one thing that I know is that God promised in his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He said he will be with you until the end of the age. No child of God that Jehovah himself is with you. The word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. If there is sickness in your body, we command it to go right now. We release healing upon you. May God provide for your needs. May the ravens come and deliver your provision daily without fail. May it be well with you. May it be well with your family members. I bless you right now. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I place the mark of the blood upon you. The Bible tells me that when the angel of death comes, where the blood is, the angel will not come in to destroy, but will go pass over you. I declare right now that you are marked with the mark of the blood of Jesus. Demons, all the powers of hell will not be able to touch your life and your family. I pronounce peace upon you. I pronounce protection, prosperity, perfect health, and the power of God. I bless you in Jesus' name. This is Apostle M.B.G. Poco of Church on the Hill, making you brighter, better, and bigger. God bless you. Amen. Wow. What a powerful message we have just received from Apostle MVG Lepoko on having the mind of Christ. Now we know what to do in order to change our behaviors and to change our lives. Go to www.cothlive.org and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Continue liking us and also subscribing.